as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just, for I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of my Father, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a Muslim. Further, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Think not, I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but fulfill. For till the heavens and the earth shall pass, not one jot or tittle of the law or the commandments shall be broken. For if anyone breaks one jot or tittle of the law or the commandments, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. For if anyone keeps the commandments and teaches men to do so, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never said that if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, believe that I am God, believe that I claim divinity, but he rather said that if you want to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 24, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that the word that you hear is not my word, but my Father who has sent me. It is mentioned in the book of Genesis, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3, that this is eternal life, that you may know that there is one God, and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, who thou hast sent. Further, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16 and 17. A man approached Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and asked him, O good master, what good thing shall I do that I shall attain eternal life? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, replies and says, Why thou call it me good? There is only one good, and that is Almighty God. And if you want to enter eternal life, you must keep the commandments. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never said that if you want to enter eternal life, believe that I am God, believe that I died on the cross for the sins, but he rather said that if you want to enter eternal life, you must keep the commandments. Further, it's mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Almighty God said, Almighty God says, that ye men of Israel, Listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by himself and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by himself and you are witness to it. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. In fact, if you read, it is mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, and in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 6, verse number 4. Shama Israelo, Adonai la hainan naikhad, Yero Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. So if you read the Christian scriptures, you shall understand the concept of God in Christianity, that you have to worship only one God. Let's discuss the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah, the one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah, the absolute, the eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. And there is nothing like unto him. This Surah Ikhlas is the touchstone of theology. Theo in Greek means Lord and Logi means study. Thus, theology means study of God. If you want to buy gold, before doing that, you will check the gold. Whether it is 22 karat gold, whether it is 24 karat gold, or whether it is not gold at all. Because all that glitters is not coal. Similarly, 
This Surah Ikhlas is the touchstone of theology. If anyone says that so and so candidate is God, and if that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims, we have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. Many people say that Bhagwan Rajneesh is Almighty God. Let's put this Bhagwan Rajneesh to the test of Surah Ikhlas. The first is, Qul Allahu Ahad. Say He is Allah, the one and only. Was Bhagwan Rajneesh one and only? There are several people who have claimed divinity. So He's not one and only. There are thousands and thousands of people who have claimed divinity. So he's not one and only, but yet some might say he's one and only. Let's go to the next test. Allah Samad. Allah, the absolute, the eternal. Was Bhagwan Rajneesh absolute and eternal? We know from his biography that he was suffering from asthma, from chronic backache, from diabetes mellitus. Imagine Almighty God suffering from asthma, from chronic backache, from diabetes mellitus. The third is, Lam Yalit Walam Yulat. He begets not, nor is he begotten. We know Bhagwan Rajesh, he was born in the state of Madhya Pradesh. And later on, in 1981, he goes to USA and in the state of Oregon, he starts his village called Rajeshpuram. And he takes thousands of Americans for a ride. Later on, the American government, they imprison Bhagwan Rajesh. And Bhagwan Rajesh was saying that the American government, they were slow poisoning him. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. Later on, the American government, they kick Bhagwan Rajneesh out of America. And he comes back to the state of Maharashtra. And in the city of Pune, he starts his village. And if you go to Pune, on his tomb, on his commune, it is mentioned, O oh soul, never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention on the tomb that he was not granted visas to anyone different countries of the world. Imagine Almighty God requiring visas to travel to different countries of the world. And the Archbishop of Greece said that if you do not throw Rajneesh out of the country, we shall burn his house as well as the house of the disciples. And the last test is so stringent that it does not befit anyone but the true Almighty God. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. And there is nothing like unto him. We know Bhagwan Rajneesh, he had two eyes, a nose, two ears and a mouth. He had a white beard and he wore a white robe. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. For example, if someone says that Almighty God, He is a thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You might have heard the person Arnold Schwarzenegger, the person who won the title, Mr. Universe, the strongest man in the world, the strongest man in the universe. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. And there is nothing like unto Him. Whether it be Bhagwan Rajneesh, or whether it be King Kong, or whether it be Dara Singh, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. So this Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, it is the touchstone of theology. I would request the brothers and sisters out here that the God which you're worshipping put him to the test of Surah Ikhlas. And if he passes the test, then the God which you're worshipping is the true God.